Well, welcome to everyone on this Sunday morning. It's good to be with you all. And uh, there once was a man where, this is a true story, where he was reading a newspaper. And when he looked in the newspaper, he found something very shocking. He was reading his own obituary. And yet he was still very much alive. And when he read his own obituary, he did not like what he read. If you were to read your own obituary in the newspaper right now, would you be satisfied with what people would read? So he, this is what he experienced. And what had happened was there was a mistake. His brother had actually passed away and there was really bad reporting. And because of that bad reporting, he began to change his life. And why did he do that? Because he was the inventor of dynamite. He created explosives. In this obituary, it literally called him the merchant of destruction. How would you like to be named like that? He was so devastated with what was said about him that he changed his life forever. This was in 1888. Do you wanna know what that man's name was? Alfred Nobel. And out of that, Alfred Nobel created the Nobel Peace Prize so that we are now forever associate, associating his name, his legacy with peace, with excellence. And it's not only just for uh, the Nobel Prize for Peace, but also for physics, chemistry, literature, medicine. Alfred Nobel changed his obituary from the master of destruction to being the creator of peace and prosperity and trying to help everyone lean in to be better. He forever changed his legacy. So my friends, what I want us to do ourselves is think about our legacy. Think about your agency that you have right now. If you're not satisfied with how you are, what can you do to change it, to make it better? so that your thoughts and words and actions can be lasting. A legacy is not what you leave for someone, it's what you leave in someone. And so here we enter our scripture. David is on his deathbed. We are now closing out the sermon on King David. He has done a fantastic job. He's been amazing. We have seen him grow and be a young man and do great things and with David and Goliath and he's so beloved and just incredible. He goes on to become king. He brings together Jerusalem. He brings home the Ark of the Covenant. There's celebrations and parties. And then he meets Bathsheba. And he has a moment where he has indiscretion. He falls in love with her and he loves her so much that he makes sure that her husband is murdered so that he can have her. That mirror is held up to him. His friend shows him, you know, tells him the sin that he's done, the transgression he has had. He has been a murderer. He's been the master of destruction. And he doesn't like what he sees. And he, he repents, he's remorseful. And now he is on his deathbed. And he's thinking about his legacy and he wants to make things right. So this is what he does because he has so many wives. And he says to Bathsheba as she comes to his deathbed, I'm going to make sure I do this right. And your son Solomon will become king. And then as he is dying, these are the words he is leaving for Solomon to be a good man. He says, be strong, act like a man, and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to God. 
Don't do the things I've done. Don't make the mistakes I've done. And keep the Lord's decrees and commands, laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. And he says, walk faithfully before me with all your heart and soul. So he's giving the best words that he can to his son. What would you say to your children? What would you say to your nephew and niece? What would you say to any child? What message is it that you want to leave? Because when we leave a legacy, it is planting seeds in the garden that you never get to see. So what seeds do you want to plant at this time? So Solomon goes on to become king, to follow in his father's footsteps. And Solomon is doing his best to give a message of hope. And this is also what I love in the book of Ephesians, because it talks about time. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of time. So my friends, what is it where you need to make the most of time? And I had a really interesting conversation with someone earlier this week. And they said to me, are you afraid to die? And I said, like anyone, we all are, right? And I said, but where I think folks struggle the most is when something has been left undone. If you had just said, I love you, that one last time, or if you had just you know, finished that project, or if you had just traveled to that one place, or if you had paid homage somewhere, or if you had done whatever, whatever that is, my friends, I really wanna encourage you, today is the day. Let's make the most of time because nothing is guaranteed for tomorrow. We only have so many sunrises and so, so many sunsets. So let's not take this for granted. Use today to be the day where you can make change, where you can rewrite your obituary, where you can enhance it or strengthen it, where you can leave a lasting legacy that will make you proud, something where it will bring you peace. And maybe some of you have heard of this poem, which is called The Dash, but it's one of my favorite poems. And it's written by Linda Ellis, and she writes, I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstones from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth and now. Only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? Or you never know how much time is left that still can be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you lived your dash? And all of God's people say, Amen.